Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the YouTube build world. Last time we put our final touches on that destroyer over there that you can barely see. I've worked on it a little bit more. Let's fly up to it and see what I've done. Ooh, bump. I've added some windows and a door into the crew quarters just in case this glass gets blown out and there's a breach into the uh, interior of the ship. That way everything doesn't immediately depressurize. And I've also added these azimuth thrusters. I'm not going to stand on top of them because even though this is a creative world, it's still a good habit not to stand on thrusters. Anyways, the reason I added these instead of the normal ion thrusters is because they have much better braking power which is something that this ship is severely lacking in and something I really wish Keen would kinda tweak because right now the hydrogen engines they have the most stopping power out of any thruster in the game but they are very resource intensive as far as ice goes even just having them on like this you're going to be burning hydrogen this doesn't matter in a survive or er, derp in a creative world, but something like this, you want to have your thrusters turned off. That way you're not burning excess fuel and you can have your stores of supplies last a little bit longer. The ion thrusters here, they just run off straight up energy. Which is why I've also added some solar panels to the top and to the bottom of the ship that way with the batteries stored inside you're not gonna run out of power anytime soon and you're going to be able to at least cruise the I are uh, the hydrogen engines oh my god I can't speak today the hydrogen engines are mostly for high-speed maneuvering and combat and such so we finished our destroyer here it works well except that these guns have very limited range I think that was because of an update Keen launched I want to say last month that broke a lot of the modded blocks which is unfortunate so today instead of doing any kind of major builds as far as ships go I want to increase the defensive capabilities of our station Having a perimeter around your station, a sort of no-fly zone that ships have to pass through before they get to the station proper is very important, especially on a survival server where somebody could easily just fly through, ignoring everything, and smash your ship or stations or whatever. You want to have a grid surrounding your station made up of uh, I bet words hard sentry stations so let's go ahead and build one and of course I'm not gonna be doing that I'm going to be using oh what am I doing character tools do 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 Well, I guess they removed station blocks, so F it. Yep, they removed the station block. Okay, that's fine. We'll just ignore that for now. We're going to be building a quick, dirty, and simple sentry. Turn on our symmetry. What am I doing? Uh, I want to have this oriented properly. This is being so difficult. Okay. Yep, 
There we go. Okay. I don't know why that was so difficult. Okay, start off with our base block. We are going to have ourselves a cargo container. Then we're going to have a conveyor junction. And extend it out two blocks in all directions. Next up, going to have a battery on all sides, and we're going to leave one side open for refueling purposes. Actually, no, never mind. We are actually going to put a couple generators on there two on top and two on the bottom there we go then we add our batteries this may seem a little strange, but it's going to make sense. This is supposed to last for a very long time. Now, guns. You want to be able to have this thing defend itself. And the best way to do that is to use Gatling turrets. These things will chew up enemy armor like it's tissue paper. And now, armor. You want this thing to be well defended, relatively. There we go. And do not cover this section. This is how you refuel your station. And you can add other blocks to it just to make it a little bit more visually appealing. There we go. And there. That's good. This protects the inner components and makes it a bit more difficult to take these things out. There we go. And as you can see, it looks well, pretty much a bit like a space potato. 
and its only job is to sit here and wait and watch for any incoming ships or stations or whatever that are going to try and attack. Set all these turrets to the maximum range. Target neutrals, stations, characters, large ships. Don't bother targeting mis uh, missiles. And there was an option, enable idle movement. Hmm. There was also something to target neutral or moving objects. I think they took that off. Hmm. Interesting. Well, anyways. You can no longer target movement with these, unfortunately, but, you know, whatever. There we go. Oops. There we go. That's better. Much, much better. And that thing right there is just whatever. But as you can see, in most cases you're going to have four or five turrets facing you no matter which direction you're facing in. This provides an excellent range of coverage. And ideally you want to space these out top, bottom, left, right, forward, back. Six directions, each one of these at least 500 meters away from the station. No further, no closer. Why? Because these will all have an overlap. Overlapping fields of fire. This is very important. So let's just copy this so I can show you pretty much how it's going to work. underneath one to the back oops cannot ship would exceed regulations what what is going on cannot play ship would exceed regulations what ship would exceed regulations what regulations well anyways you get the idea overlapping fields of fire surrounding your station or shipyard or asteroid and basically any ship coming in is going to have a very bad day because they're going to have all of those guns plus the guns on the station itself and any nearby ships all opening fire on them all at once. Even people launching torpedoes are going to have a very hard time not just hitting these but these are all going to open fire on any incoming targets and with this many guns it's just going to shred apart anything coming its way. So your safety is more or less assured. So I'm going to delete a few of these. And I'm just going to blueprint this one. Because why not? Alright, hopefully this was an educational video for you. And of course refueling these is simple. Just get some uranium and ammunition, come up here open your cargo container and load everything you need. It'll all disperse itself into all the necessary parts. 
and these, because of the batteries, will run for a very long time. The turrets require almost no power whatsoever. And the batteries, of course, will store plenty of power. So, even if you're going to be gone for a long time, days and days and days, let's actually see if I can't get a cockpit or seat on here just to see how much power is going to be sitting on here. Let's see. 42 days. That's with nothing. That's with fully charged <clears throat> batteries and just a couple reactors. No uranium or anything in there. So just that, 42 days. And of course the batteries will charge themselves. And is this thing... Really? This thing is moving? Ah, Keen, 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 please. Please, start fixing your shit. This is getting tiresome. But anyways, you all get the concept. It's quick, it's easy. If you can anchor it, even better. If not, just extend it off from your station with some partially built blocks. You're gonna do just fine. So I hope you found this educational, and I'll see you next time.